Good morning, garden friends. Welcome to my potage on this uh, little bit chilly and cloudy Vermont fall morning. This past week, the weather has definitely turned, feeling more like fall. And actually tomorrow, today is the 28th, tomorrow is the 29th, is my average first frost date. However, in my forecast, it doesn't have any lows below 43, I think, in the next 10 days. So I'm gonna get, I think, at least another week or two, if, you know, the weather predictions are correct, which they may not be. Um, but that will be a huge blessing this year as I got everything in a little bit late. September really is our time of abundance here in the garden. We start producing, most of our summer crops don't start producing until August. And so September is really a beautiful time here. Um, the garden is overgrown as happens. Um, I'm starting this area here, which is the south gate of my garden. The gate itself uh, had some catastrophic failure. <laughs> so I'm going to be rethinking that this uh, this coming winter and hopefully put a new one up that works better next spring. The other ones are holding up, but um, could use a little bit of tweaking as well. So we'll see. Anyway, as we enter here, I've got a row of Snapdragons on the left and a row of Cosmos on the right. Um, the Cosmos have all flopped. A lot of the Snapdragons actually flopped early too. Uh, next year I will net them, but they're looking so beautiful. Um, I have been cutting, I, I cut a lot of the snapdragons earlier in the season and now I've just been kind of letting them go. I'm hoping uh, I'll be able to get some seeds off of most of them. Um, some of these Cosmos actually just started opening up. So let me show you some of them. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to remember all the varieties here. I think this might be a cranberry one. I'm not sure. I had original plan going in and then some of them didn't make it and I swapped some out for what I had. But these ones just, these ones here just started budding up. Like last week, I was like, whoa. Um, the Purity White Cosmos here have been doing well for a while. They were the first to bloom. I have not been out here deadheading, guys, but they still look great. Even flopped over from the house, I can see them, and they're really fun. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to get some off of this one soon. That might Is that the same one I showed you before? I don't even know anymore. They're all kind of a tangled mess in here, and I'm just letting them be. This one, I'm pretty sure, is Pico Tea. Isn't that beautiful? I will be coming out. I don't have time this morning. I'm sneaking in some time um, before I have to homeschool the kids while my husband's holding the baby and playing with them for me. But I'm going to come out and cut some later this week. Maybe I'll bring you along. Um, I've been loving cutting flowers and making bouquets this year. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, that, those I think are seashells. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those are the seashell ones. And over here, I think this is a double click. They're all fluffy. And I think this might be tetra red or it might be cranberry. I'm not 100% sure. Um, either way, they are beautiful. I'll try to list the varieties um, I know below as well, what I have. Since we're here, let's go back through the Snapdragon just a little bit. I'm pretty sure these are a um, Costa lavender that I got from Florette. They would have been so much taller and straight up had I netted them, <laughs> but I didn't. And early in the season, the winds got them. Uh, this is a black prince. My son loves these. They're so they're like a beautiful, deep burgundy color. The flowers and then the stems and the leaves are all dark as well, which is really a nice contrast with some of the other ones. Um, this one is actually, I think, a mix um, that I got from Hudson Valley Seed Co. And it has this lovely white. Let me see. This one's actually probably perfect picking stage so I might come pick that later um and it also had these beautiful like I don't think there's any more than this but any of these plum ones I'm going to see if I can save the seeds of this one specifically and then I think this was in the mix as well the yellow was in the mix I don't know if that one was in the mix or if that was an apple blossom that got kind of mixed place no my apple blossom looked different so I think that's in the mix as well then I have rose here and these I got from Eden Brothers, I believe. Um, and I think they also had this kind of, some of them came up a little bit more uh, purpley. And then these, these beautiful ones here are um, Apple Blossom, also from uh, Eden Brothers. And then down here, these are my daughter's favorite. These are really fun. They're kind of a graduated, they start, like the bottom start off like more yellow and then orange and then more red as they go up. And these are Rembrandt, which I also got from Hudson Valley Seed Company. So there's my, my flower border. I love how this looks. I'm going to do 
flowers here again next year. Um, I may do zinnias instead of um, cosmos there. We're going to see and put cosmos in some other places. Um, I've been thinking through my plan for next year already. Those of you who are gardeners will know you kind of always thinking ahead. Let's move this way to see what's happening. I ended up pulling out most of the cucumber plants already, um, but I have I left a couple because they were still looking okay when I did that. Um, now they're ready to go, um, but I'm going to go and I actually brought my tub out this morning and a clippers. So I'm going to go ahead and just clip some of these cucumbers here. Um, usually I, I harvest stuff in the afternoon, but we're taking time where we have it. This one is a salt and pepper cucumber. Um, and I love them. I let this go a little over, so that's why it's so yellow. Um, they were, they're supposed to be picked smaller. They're a pickling cucumber and they are like white and they have these little, you can kind of see some of the black dots still on them. Um, they get a little hairy. <laughs> these were good, but I think I grew mostly pickling cucumbers and I don't, I haven't, I wasn't picking them at the correct stage. It was hard for me to get out here every day, every other day to pick them. Um, so I think I will grow more of the slicers next year. Um, these ones I loved and I will grow these again. These are a silver slicer, I think. Silver slicer. Um, I'll have it below. I got these seeds from Hudson Valley Seed Company. But I think they're available in several places. These do get a little bit bigger, but I'm just going to take them now. And they are, get, you know, longer and they're a white color. They're a little dirty. I did try to tie them up, but I, some of these I just kind of let go. So these are unicorn mix zinnias from Florette. This one is really a showstopper there. I may tag that one and see if I can, hopefully it'll have time to dry a little bit um, and I can get seeds from that one. These tomatoes look so pretty right now. I spent a good afternoon uh, pruning these up a couple weeks ago. Really, if you stay on top of it and prune them earlier, then it's not as much of a chore or tie them up and prune them earlier. I hadn't done anything, they were crazy. Uh, maybe I'll put some clips in here of what uh, they looked like in the pruning a little bit. But I really love how they look right now, especially this row here. This is all my cherry tomatoes, and then there's a slightly bigger one at the end. In each row, I also put these rows of basil here. This row happens to be um, alternating between two dwarf Greek globe basils and one large leaf basil. I have obviously let the uh, dwarf Greek go uh, to flower. They are so pretty, and they were so cute earlier this season, too. They're just little mounds. I love them so much. And I've been picking this basil really heavily. I've gotten a lot to dry. I, I want to do another pass through here and uh, grab pretty much what's left of, left of the non-flowering ones to make pesto. Um, let me tell you more about the tomatoes though. So um, over here we are starting with a purple bumblebee and I really need to get to picking these to be honest but I might I usually like to pick my tomatoes later in the day so I might actually get my kids to come out with me later and do that. Um, so this is purple bumblebee here. They are supposed to be this darker color if you can see through there actually. Back there is a really good example, but these are pretty close here. We like those a lot. They're a little bit bigger of a, more of like a grape or saladette size. And these are Sunrise Bumblebee. We love these. We grew this our very first year here and we've been growing them ever since. This is a new variety to me this year. This is Chiapas. I'm gonna just, I think that's a thistle seed, so I'm gonna stick that in my pocket <laughs> so it doesn't get somewhere. Um, Chiapas from Fruition Seeds and it's, um, different and they're smaller than the cherries I've grown in the past and I like them. I think I'd grow these again. They're also so beautiful. Look at that. Then we have blue cream berries. Oh, that one's already starting to split here. That is the downside with these ones is they do split really easily, but they're so delicious and they're really sweet. Um, they're, they get blue on the top where the sun hits them and then underneath they are this yellow creamy color. I think there's also a blue gold. I haven't gotten my hands on those yet. Mm, I don't know if we can see the other, the next ones on this side. Actually, that might have been the one on this side and the one... Let me go around for a minute. Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy. While we're here, I got some ground cherries growing beautifully. Uh, ground cherries are amazing. Let's see if I can find... We I came out here the other day with a friend and... We've got all the ripe ones we could, but... Ah, I see some. Oh, here we go. 
So that is what it looks like. So kind of like a small tomatillo in that because it gets the husk. And then let's see if I can do this one-handed. Yes, that is gorgeous. Um, it turns this gorgeous yellow color inside. And I mean, the closest to describe it is a mix between like a tropical fruit and a tomato. It's amazing. Mm, I'm just coming out snacking this morning. Okay. But these are two different varieties, actually. This is a Cossack's pineapple. Seeds also from fruition. And that one is a um, Aunt Molly's ground cherry that I got from Baker Creek a couple years ago. I only grew that one last year. We liked them. But I think I like this one better. It's producing more and earlier. Um, you can see here I actually alternated. And that's my other Aunt Molly's. I don't know what happened there. And that's my other uh, Cossack's pineapple. So next year I think I'm going to grow a lot more of the Cossack's pineapple. I would love to get enough to um, make some jam. I think that would be really fun. Um, and thus far they don't really get in out of the garden. <laughs> Okay, so coming back here, I had shown you the blue cream berries, but on this side actually there is blue, just blueberries I think it's called. They're both the, um, oh, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, they're from Baker Creek Seeds is where I got the seeds, Boar Farm or something like that, I'll have it below. And these ones are just red that have the purple on top, same thing where the sun hits them. Um, those are taking a little bit longer to ripen, it looks like. They do not crack as easily as the, um, the cream ones, though. And then on this end, this is not a, a cherry or grape tomato. This is, um, indigo apple. And it also is blue on the top and red on the bottom. I really liked those, so I wanted to try this. And they're ripening a little slower. I do need to go get that one over there. Um, but I'm really excited to try those this year. I haven't actually tried one yet. I've got one ripening on the counter right now, though. And here. So the basil in this row, on this side, we've got lemon and lime basil, which I actually grew mainly for flowers. Um, they make beautiful flowers. I put them in a bouquet with zinnias. It was my favorite. And they also smell delicious. But before they bloom, especially, you can take the leaves and put them in, you know, like lemonade or other drinks. It'd be good in iced tea, however you like it. Um, I think they're a really good addition. And then that side is... Uh, uh, Thai basil, which my kids love to just come out and eat plain from the garden. And uh, I had also had plans to make a bunch of Thai dishes with them. And I just, with the baby, didn't, I forgot. I forgot I was supposed to do that. <laughs> so I haven't, but maybe next year. And we'll just walk down and around this way. And then I'll show you those tomatoes on the other side. These are, I think, Mazurkia zinnias, which have had more bug damage on them. All of these zinnias here were planted a lot later than some of my others. And so they've just started flowering in the last few weeks. Um, let's see. Okay, so here we have Amish paste. This is my row of uh, paste tomatoes. Now, these plants, I'll see if I can find a picture. They were just completely decimated by hornworms early in the season um, when they were maybe, like, yay tall. And I left them because I just, like, I saw some green left on them. And I wanted to see what happened. And they grew back. I mean, they're really far behind. You can see they just started getting this fruit. I don't know if we'll get time for those to ripen or not. Um, but I'm really happy they came back. After that, I was obviously much more diligent about the hornworms. And actually, knock on something, they haven't been as bad this year. It was a, a couple weeks where we had to stay on top of them. And then it was good from there. Uh, these are Marzano Fire. And again, I'm going to have to come back and, and harvest these later. I don't think I have time to get them all right now. Um, these I like. They grow, they usually, they've got a little bit more red than, than this, but they have like yellow-orange streaking to them. So they're similar to San Marzano, just kind of a variety of that. And these are growing beautifully. All my tomatoes are growing, um, I think, beg better and bigger than they did last year. And one, I think the biggest thing is we've had consistent rain this year. Last year was drought conditions or almost drought conditions here. So the rain is super helpful. Um, and I also, I put, um, I actually put some uh, like compost fertilizer from fresh and seeds in each hole as I planted. And I think that also probably helped a bit. Um, okay. These are a new variety as well to me. These are Pianolo del Vesuvio grown on the banks of Vesuvius in Italy. So I just wanted to try them. <laughs> Usually I would prune like farther up, but these were already producing. And because it's so late in the season and uh, I want to make sure we got some, I left them lower, um, but I'll be coming out and harvesting those soon as well. Just about time to make sauce. Okay. Swinging around here. You see my ground cherries at the end again. Um, Oh, there's some more ripe ones in there. I'm going to have to... 
no, no note on those. Um, let me tell you about the basil in here. This is just alternating between sweet Genovese, that's your classic basil, and a purple opal basil. Um, I think that's what it is. Um, it's a purple basil. And this on the end here is Sarinth or Honeywort. Um, I had a few in another location last year and it did not grow this well or this tall and I just love, I haven't actually cut any yet, but I think it'd be beautiful in arrangements. I think there's two plants in here. Um, so I am going to go ahead and cut some of this soon for some arrangements this week, I think. And I'm going to plant more of it next year. I just think it's so beautiful. And it has, it's really, I think could act as more of a foliage planted in arrangements, but these are just so cute. Okay, well, let's go around to the last row of tomatoes. I'm clearly a messy gardener. As I was pruning, I didn't get rid of all these. I got rid of some, but yeah, I need to do some cleanup. Okay, so this last row are my big slicer tomatoes, and the first two here are Paul Robeson, and there's some starting to ripen there. I wasn't sure when I was pruning this broke, and I wasn't sure how it was going to do, but they seem to be blushing and ripening, so that's good. Um, let's see here. Oh, Dr. Witches or White Cheese or however you say it. These ones are definitely ready to pick. Um, we're getting some really big ones this year. It's exciting. Oh, I need to take that off, huh? What's going on there? That must have broken at some point. Okay. So yes, two of the Dr. Whiteches, I guess that's what I'm going with. And then two of the Cherokee Purple. Um, you can kind of see there's a ripe one that's ready to be picked on the other side here is kind of what they look like. They end up being more purple than the Paul Robeson. Um, and these, I also have the first ones ripening on the counter, so I think today I'm going to make some tomato sandwiches for lunch and try them out, so I can let you know later what I think. Um, okay, try not to make you dizzy. This is like a wild area back here right now. Um, this is my asparagus patch that still has not been weeded, so I'm sorry, asparagus. I'm hoping it still is okay. It's, I mean, it's got its fronds, so um, there's a lot of little ones in here, actually which is good to see more of them came up. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on weeding this this fall so that uh, they have room next spring and hopefully getting some compost down them this fall as well. So hopefully it'll be good. One big problem I've been having in the garden this year is thistle. I took out some plants early in the spring, but I have not been on top of finding all the little ones. So you will see more of these gigantic thistle plants. And I need to spend like a day coming through here with my shovel and some thick gloves and get rid of all those. And you could see I was trying to pick off seeds where I found them and trying to put them in my pocket and bring them inside to the trash so that they don't. I've, uh, you know, I've had burdock problems since we moved in, but the thistle, I think I let it get a little too out of control. Okay, let's keep moving back here. These beds I haven't touched at all this year. These are still weeds that were here last year, but over the next couple weeks, these are priority next things to clean out so I can get ready to put, put some fall bulbs in here. Um, so that will be happening. Look at this beautiful aster that's technically a weed, but uh, it's beautiful, and I'll probably leave that for a while for the pollinators. Back here is where I had my peas earlier in the year. They're actually still back behind all the weeds. Um, I did plant some Swiss chard, but because it's so far back in this mess, we don't often come back here and pick it, so that's kind of sad. I just actually planted some more for fall, but I, I'm going to be harvesting everything over the next couple weeks. That's why I really wanted to uh, come do this tour now while everything is full, and then I'm going to start kind of systematically going through and harvesting all the things and cleaning things out for fall. Um, my herb beds are likewise just, just a mess here. There's a lot of Queen Anne's lace in there, but this is my comfrey, um, which I should cut back and lay down as mulch. My catnip kind of succumbed to something a little earlier in the year. Um, usually I leave things like this up um, not the, I won't leave the comfrey, but the other plants I'll leave up during the winter for habitat, but I don't know, because the cat mint, I'd like to kind of get, I think there's like a bunch of yarrow growing under there and stuff, and it's a mess. Uh, anise hyssop and hyssop are also in, in this weedy, weedy mess, and I, I just need to plant it up more next year, I think will help with that. Um, I do have some culinary herbs in this one, but this is also mostly weeds. I'll show you more when we get over there. Over here is my herb circle, which is actually doing relatively well. My chamomile just like, I had to restart it several times this year. I do need to, this is all like stuff that needs to be pulled back and weeded and possibly mowed. Um, so I, I, re I reseeded it several times this year and this is all I've got for right now. Um, oh no, I need to make sure that I'm not, I've got some St. John's wort, I think, growing in there. I've got to clear out these weeds so I can see if I can tell the difference between the St. John's wort and the weeds. Um, 
but hopefully I'll be able to do that this fall and that will that should come back and perennialize the calendula just reseed itself like crazy this past year so I tried to reconfine it to its area my lavender I put in there is actually doing really well I put that in the spring then we've got holy basil which will not be a perennial here so I will need to reseed that every year my sage is overtaking my time <laughs> uh, they're just kind of competing it out and the sage is winning right now my shadow's in the way I'm going to come back and cut a lot of that soon, hang it to harvest for, um, to use culinarily. Um, I do have back here a lady's mantle, which again, needs to be freed from the weeds and is really in between this bully of sage and bully of lemon balm, which hopefully I can cut both back a little bit, but it does like some shade. So, um, in some ways it's actually good for it. It's doing a lot better than it did last year. Um, I ended up having to replace it this year because last year I think it got too much sun to be honest. This glorious bed is, uh, there's five zucchinis plants in here that have been amazing. We have way too much zucchini, <laughs> um, which I've heard people say in the past. Last year I grew two and I, I got like one or two zucchinis last year. It didn't, they didn't grow well. So I planted five this year from a direct seeded them in here. And oh my gosh, we've, we've gotten so many and we get so many gigantic ones because I don't pick them off enough, but I see one right here and I'm going to get it right now while I see it. Let's do that. And this is, I want to say Nimba is the variety of zucchini. It's got this, um, like light and dark streaking on it. I really like it. It's beautiful. And um, our favorite thing to do with it is actually make zucchini muffins. I shred it. And I've also been shredding some and freezing it in uh, two cup portions so I can make more muffins out of it this year. You can see the plants are starting to get powdery mildew. We've had several days of just like drizzliness at this point. I'm actually really grateful the sun's out right now. It's supposed to be super cloudy today. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're pretty much ready to go. I'm just like kind of letting them go, collecting what I can and probably within the next two weeks I'll I'll take them out. We'll see when the frost comes. Um, beyond them are amaranth. That's the, um, oh, I'm ble I love lies bleeding. It's the love lies bleeding, beautiful, drapey. I think next to, next year I will plant them closer together so they get stay a little smaller. It's easier for bouquets. Um, I've got my sunflower patch over here, which I've been loving. I've just been leaving most of them to go and be seeds for the birds. Um, I might I might take some of the seeds, for, uh, some of the heads. For, to save for seeds and I might try eat, and we don't really eat a lot of sunflower seeds in the house but it might be good to try some maybe um, there would be a good addition to like a granola or something like that if you guys have any other ways you use sunflower seeds let me know they've just been so happy and I love I can they're tall I can see them from the house so that's been really nice um, okay I'm gonna go ahead and do the back section now uh, hang on I'm gonna go put this I'm gonna put the zucchini in my bucket first Okay, if you haven't been following me for a while, um, I have a huge problem with grass in my garden beds. I was really disheartened last year. So this year I decided to try to use landscape fabric. My initial thought was to just use it in the pads, and then I ended up, you'll see it, seen, you'll have seen now that I used it in some of the, many of the beds as well. Um, my main goal would be to not have to use it and to have mulch in the pads and just, you know, soil in the garden beds, but... Uh, for right now, this is kind of saving my sanity a little bit. Um, but we've got these raised beds kind of hidden back there here. This is crazy. Um, it has been really helpful to have the landscape fabric down back here so I don't have to worry about mowing it. Um, these are onions and carrots and thistle, um, which I need to harvest. My carrots, I've just left so and they, they are huge. Um, I might put in a picture here of, you know, some of the carrots we've picked. Um, they're still good, so I'm just leaving them and kind of picking them as needed for right now. I'm going to need to pick and either store or um, preserve them in some way soon. Um, beyond that grass that's in there, there's some beautiful marigolds blooming as well. I think those are petite, a petite mix I had. Um, so this bed has uh, Danvers carrots and then around the edge, the onions, I believe. And I can't believe these aren't like flopped right now. Maybe I should flop this one. Um, can't see that one beyond the thistle. I've already picked some of the onions just like as needed, but I need to come and just get them all. Um, there we go. My goodness, there's still some leaks in there. <laughs> Holy cow. It's a mess. Um, okay, so this this onion variety is, let's see if I can remember, it's the New York, nope, it's not the New York early. I'll put it down below when I figure it out. I planted New York early in the bed over there, 
and then the back here are some red ones and I'll I'll try to get the varieties for you so yes there's it's a yellow onion and Danvers carrots here with marigolds at the end and this bed has this gorgeous patch of zinnia which has actually taken over a lot of the bed but it's great I've been cutting off of these hard all season and they're just doing so beautifully um, and then there's purple dragon carrots in this section as well as uh, red onions around the edge which I'm hoping to pickle because we love pickled red onions there was a volunteer tomato plant if you see my other videos I have let it go I think it's just about time for it to be taken out because I can't like it's hard to get to all the right fruit I can't walk through here at all and it's just it's crazy but it was kind of a fun experiment this I think it's a purple bumblebee I'm pretty sure so um, that's what tomatoes do if you don't tie them up and prune them it's very cool actually they kind of take over um, okay moving along as I said this has uh, New York early onions along the edges all the way down it's a longer bed and um, two different kinds of carrots there's ox heart here and there's Parisian down there at the very end we'll go see a little closer but there's some beautiful um, orchid cream nasturtiums there is a giant thistle here but this bed is and was beets and rutabaga which are also huge but and I did pick some of the beets earlier in the year here um, but obviously um, I never got the thistle out so I haven't been able to harvest them because it's too pokey so I need to do that um, there I mean I'm growing beautiful thistle I guess um, uh, let me just mention while I'm here kind of pan over here that this section here will be a tunnel at some point it was my arch at the first year and I let it go I've been I you'll see in the front I've been slowly kind of reclaiming this area and the goal is for this fall to get all this grass knocked back and beds back in place um, but I can basically do that after the the frost as long as the grounds not completely frozen I can keep working on that so that's my plan here is where my garlic was and after I pulled my garlic potato plants came up so oh, oh another thistle darn you thistle um, so yeah I'm leaving those and then after the frost they flowered and everything but after the frost kills them back I will I will harvest those see what we get from that that's kind of exciting this is my beautiful spilling nasturtium this is amazing I think I don't know if there's like six or eight plants in here actually or I don't even know I think I direct seeded them um, and this is what I wanted to happen and I love it and it is gorgeous and glorious um, but these orchid cream flowers are beautiful it's a little I don't know if it's rain or dew oh there's a little bug in there Alrighty, so yeah, I haven't done anything with this back section this year. I did knock it down once with the weed whacker, and then it's all started to come back. This is my glorious elder. I love her so much. Uh, underneath, she's got a gigantic comfrey and strawberries and some other things. It's I'm letting it go wild. So that's what that is. And then this bed, it was my strawberries the past two years. And then this year we went to harvest, or to uncover them from the straw, and there were not many strawberry plants left. I think they had been eaten by voles and it was very sad. So I haven't been over here and clearly there's these tall things. So we'll, we'll make it something else next year. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put more t strawberries in here next year. I'm, I'm thinking of making a strawberry bed in the berry garden, but that's a conversation for another day. So we will see how that goes. All right, so we're back in this weedy area here. Let me come back around. All right, let's come back up to this front area of the garden. Um, you can see the house there. We are currently bringing my bringing my tub with us. Uh, we are currently facing east, so that maybe you can get some bearings. Uh, we came in that gate over there by the Snapdragons and Cosmos. Okay, so here in the middle is my quince tree. It was planted in 2019, so three years in the ground here. It's going a little crazy with the suckers and. I should probably get those suckers this fall. Um, we've got one quince from it this year. Very exciting. I don't know how to tell when it's ready. I need to look that up, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be yellow, and most of them say they harvest in October, November, so we'll do that. Um, okay, and then I had alliums and daffodils growing earlier in the year, and they were beautiful, and then I planted some nasturtium around the edge. I was kind of hoping they would fill out more to suppress weeds, and they've kind of struggled here, so... I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm probably. What I'll probably end up doing is planting some herbs here next year. Um, some things that do better in like a guild situation like this. So that's my plan. Let's start. Uh, let's do this bed over here. 
So this is a dill. This is my one dill plant that came up. I direct seeded a couple times actually. This is my one that survived. Um, this is, I'm pretty sure, bouquet dill. I mainly grew this for the flowers for pollination amongst my brassicas here. So uh, I've got uh, rows of Brussels sprouts in the back and here. Ooh, sorry for the thing. Um, broccoli that I've let go to flower and calendula. I did, I did harvest some of the broccoli before I let it go to flower. Um, but it's so nice for the pollinators to have that later in the year too. It's nice to just kind of let it go. And I love the calendula row as well. Um, that hasn't prevented all the cabbage moth damage as you can see here. A lot of holes, but I need to harvest some Brussels sprouts. So I'm really excited about that. I'm, um, I'm debating whether I should try to wait until the frost to do that. If I should just start picking the bigger ones now, if you have thoughts, let me know. This is my first year that I've successfully grown Brussels sprouts, so I'm excited about it. Um, let's see here. This was supposed to be my three sisters bed with, um, or I should just say corn beans and squash. I don't want to appropriate there. That's um, a Native American technique and um, belief in the three sisters, the corn, the beans, and the squash and how they all grow together and enhance each other. Um, my squash is growing. I've got it's done much better than it did last year. Um, I'm excited about that. And I actually planted some. My corn didn't germinate, and so I planted some beans. I tried putting them on the poles, but the pole fell down. So there's a couple of pole beans in here that I think are just going wild, and I don't, I'm not sure how they're done. And then a couple of bush beans as well, which are producing, but they're kind of hidden in the vines. I could see them better now because the vines are starting to die back. Um, these are pretty much all ready to harvest, so I'll be cleaning this up soon. We've got a uh, New England pie pumpkin. Um, there's some acorn squash in there. There's spaghetti squash. Um, there's a winter luxury pie pumpkin. Actually, this one, I think it was, well, the plants over here were uh, winter luxury, but I think this might be a New England from, like, over here. Um, and then honey nut squash, which are growing, and they're so cute. I think they need more time. Um, I'm going to try to give them as much as I can, but pull them in before we get a frost in the forecast. So I'm actually happy with how this bed turned out. I'm just happy to have so many pumpkins for this year. There's still some green ones in here too. So I'm just going to let the ones that are green go for as long as I can and start like some of the orange ones are definitely ready to pick. Um, here, I'm going to get back to those raised beds in a minute. Uh, but here I have marigolds are growing gloriously. And then there's some cabbages and some kale. Um, and I could probably harvest some of these now. Um, these are, this is a red express, I'm pretty sure. I did put some melons in really late in the year just to see, because I thought it was better to put them in than have them die. So uh, these might be almost ready as well. These are, oh dear, I'm forgetting the name again. Um, I'll put it down below. But, um, they are, they're just a cow that ends up taking longer, so I'm trying to give them as long as possible. Um, Right. And I think that's it. That's what's in this bed. There's a couple more cabbages on the other side. The marigold's hard to see. These are a dazzling blue kale, which I just, I don't pick as much. And my kids don't pick as much when I send them out to kale. We tend to pick more of this blue scotch curly kale. So, but I'm going to be picking a lot of it soon. I mean, it is frost tolerant. Um, and so I might wait until it gets one or two frosts before I pick all of it. Um, but then I actually like to, when I have extra, I like to freeze it. And then it goes really well in um, like soups and such when it's frozen. This is my edible flower bed. I mean, the kale came back from last year, so I've left that. It's not really an edible flower. If it was flowering, it would be an edible flower, though. So, you know, we'll, we'll give that. Um, so I've got marigolds. This is a, a blue spice basil there. It smells so good. Um, and this is also great for cut flowers as well. I like that quite a bit. Um, I just, I like the smell better than the... Um, cinnamon basil personally um it's not quite the cinnamon basil has more um more i don't know reddish redness to the leaves i might grow both next year <laughs> i've got several varieties of nasturtiums down here i'm not entirely sure what kinds they are right now um i just kind of seeded a bunch of things this is um a, an alyssum that's the queen of the night maybe i'll have to put it down below as well um, but it's a beautiful purple lesson. I think I got the seeds from Eden Brothers. This is a white borage. I got the seeds from uh, Baker Creek this year. And I think they might just all be too close together. There's like a bunch in there that I didn't end up thinning. Um, and I also planted them somewhat late. But I think I planted them at the same time as that blue borage there, which has been flowering for a while. So 
Um, might just be that they're too close together. This straw bales, I meant to put a bench here this year. That's going to be on my list for next year. Um, but that's there to like market a place for the bench. I did stick some violets in here this year, um, which have been growing foliage. I got them in a little later in the year than they usually flower. So hopefully we'll see some flowers on those next spring. Um, this is a variegated nasturtium. How pretty is that? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is a, um, a bergamot, I think this is a lemon bergamot or bee balm, and it got horrible powdery mildew earlier in the year, and I kept meaning to cut it back. Um, but now it's starting to kind of flower a little bit again. So I, I will cut it back this fall. Um, I don't want to leave the powdery mildew star stuff out in the garden. Oh, I should mention, I'm going to pan here, um, back here in this corner here. That's another um, wild uh, lemon bergamot there. Um, also blooms pur bloom purple, the same plant, um, that I planted the year before. And I, I didn't have the heart to cut it down. And since I hadn't gotten to any of this yet, I just left it. But also with the powdery mildew. Um, okay. So I think a few more beds to go. Um, we'll, we'll go to these new beds up front first. Let's see. So these are new. Um, this one actually is only been in like two days. So um, these are kits from... Oh, I'm hoping I'm going to say it right. I think it's Frame It All, and I'll have it linked below. This is not sponsored or affiliate or anything like that. Um, I'm just trying them out. Um, I just, again, frustrated with the grass, and I wanted to make these nice planting spaces, so I decided to try them. These are, they, so they come in different size kits. They are, they the uh, the tools I used were um, well scissors to cut things like packages open, but mainly just a mallet um, to hammer in stakes. We got a soil from the garden center. We just put it. In. I did put landscape fabric underneath um, because I've just been so frustrated with the grass. There is still this soil, especially was sitting for a while, and so it had some grass seeds in it. And I have been weeding it, and it looks like I already need to go through again. So I'm going to try to stay on top of that this fall to see if I can get those grass blades out because that's really frustrating. But let me tell you what's in them, because that's probably more, more interesting to you. So um, this bed is going to be cut flowers next year, mostly. I did put some pansies at the end of either side here. Yep, pansies. And um, I am trying some cool flowers. So let me just come around here so I can just tell you all the things that I did. There's going to be more that come in here in the spring. And I will put some straw down for mulch this winter. Um, okay, so this, we've got... Little tiny seedlings of Canterbury bells here. I'm hoping they survive. If not, I'll also try, I'll start some for the spring or try direct sowing in the spring when I can. Um, blue pleurum here. Um, so some of these, like I think the blue pleurum and Canterbury bells might both be better direct seeded. Um, but because I just put the stay there last weekend, I started these, oh, several weeks ago now to see if I could give them a head start. And I also did put some seeds in the ground here. So we're gonna see what happens and what is there in the spring. Um, and these are bachelor buttons, which same thing, I think better to direct sow, but I started some early and then put some seeds in as well. Um, I do have some plants here that I want to stick in other places. I have more bachelor's buttons and violets and some other herbs that I'm going to put like in the edible flower garden and um, some other places. So hopefully we'll get to that this weekend. Um, here, I've got more cut flowers here and we've got an nigella, which I think also prefers to be direct seeded, same story. Um, and there are some seeds in here. There's a variety that didn't really grow well for me uh, inside, so that's just direct seeded. Um, Dianthus or Sweet William. And my poppies didn't do, my Iceland poppies didn't do well inside either. So I direct seeded some, a row of Iceland poppies there. We'll see how that goes. And then here I have um, my fall garden. <laughs> which should have been in several weeks ago but again it's kind of all one big experiment in here um i have some hoops um uh, the package is on the ground over there <laughs> and i'm hoping to get that in either tonight or later this weekend and um yeah so we've got i direct seed in some lettuce and some uh, arugula and spinach and i've got a row of swiss chard here and more kale and then cabbages and um I put fever few for flowers down at the bottom here. And so I'm gonna put hoops over from like the cabbages down through the greens. Um, and then when we start getting frost in the forecast, I'll start covering them. These should mostly all be frost tolerant anyway, but I'm just, my, my goal is to kind of see how far I can get through the season um, with that, or how far into the winter. 
Um, here we have my bean and pea teepee, so I had peas on it early this spring, and now it has beans, and these are a black runner bean, and I need to work on getting some more of them up. But I love how this one's climbing. Look at this, and I am just um, letting these grow, and I'm going to save the seeds, um, and that's how we're going to use them. I think you can also eat them fresh, um, but I, I'm going to save. The, I want to save some seeds for next year because they're also just beautiful. I don't know if they have any flowers right now, but they get these beautiful red flowers, and hummingbirds really like them. Oh, there might be one little one you can kind of see over here. Um, right, so that's what that is. We'll get some seeds, and I'll save for seed, and then you can also cook the seeds. I haven't tried them yet, but I think the packet, these were from Baker Creek, I think said that they could taste like kidney beans, So, and I like kidney beans, so there's that. There's a giant mullein growing here that I've been mowing around when I do mow. <laughs> Um, because I love it so I might actually harvest those leaves I was debating trying to move that and there's another one back there into my herb garden on the other side my herb fairy garden um, so we'll see I don't know if it will transplant well but I might try it all right let's finish up here with this pumpkin patch um, okay there I planted four different varieties of pumpkins in here um, later than I should have that's the story this year with the garden um, if you're new to my channel I actually have a baby that's going to be four months in a couple days. So he was born May 30th, which is just after our uh, average last frost. And so um, I was delayed in putting everything in. I also have a two-year-old, and that is my oldest, my eight-year-old running through, and a six-year-old, and I homeschool and am caretaker for all of them. So um, that is... <laughs> That is my story, and that is why things are a little late and weedy and all that this year, and I'm just embracing it. it it's beautiful this time of year still, though, regardless of weeds and being behind. So anyway, um, my son helped me direct, so actually, my six-year-old, um, these Howden pumpkins along here, and I think there's one green one in here. Um, these we grow for jack-o'-lanterns, and I did tell him, we, we get pumpkins from other local farms and such too, so he will get to carve a jack-o'-lantern regardless, and I'm going to try to leave that as long as I can again. There's some green ones here that I don't think have any hope, but at this point I'm letting them go. I did cut the tips um, that were running out off of some of these so that hopefully they would send energy to ones that were already forming. Well, there's some sort of creatures in there. Um, okay, and then I did a row. I think this row was the Rouge Vie des Temps. Um, or like red pumpkins um is this one here they're kind of more of a flat shape yeah this is one here this will turn a little bit redder um let's see there was one over there that's i'll show you when we get to it it's kind of moldy to be honest it's like molding on the vine and i don't know what's up there i need to get i need to dispose of that one um and the leaves here also all are getting more and more powdery mildew a lot of this happened over the last few days with the drizzly rain and I just leave it. Um, some people that I trust, uh, such as Charles Dowding and Petra Fruition Seeds, have mentioned that, you know, that's just what happens at the end of the season with a lot of squash uh, where we live. And um, so we leave them as long as we can because they, as long as they still have some green, they're still getting some of the energy um, from and the sugars from photosynthesizing. And then I will put them in my compost and it won't be a problem. So, um Yes, that is my story on that. Uh, moving on, so I think there's more of the Rouge Vie des Temps growing in here, which is great. They're like my fa one of my favorites. Um, and then I have a row of white, I think it's the Dutch boar ones. I think there's one white one growing in there here. Let me see if I can... Oh, well, first, let me just tell you that the last row was Jaredale, which is this green one, and I see one right here. They're all kind of mixed together. I kind of like how that happens. So it's just like light green color. Those are really fun. Um, let me see if I can carefully climb in here and see if that's a, one of my white ones. Because <laughs> those ones hadn't been growing as well. Yeah, it looks like a white one there. And I actually see another big Howden one. So with the Howdens, all of them we just direct seeded. With the other varieties, I think half were direct seeded and half were uh, transplanted. Um, I think I see another tiny one there. So it's going to be what it's going to be. I think if I can get these to start turning orange, um, if I if I have to take them before the frost comes, I think they will finish turning um, inside if I can do that off the vine. All right, I'm going to climb over here. Woo! Thank you for joining me on my adventures in the pumpkin patch. 
All right, there's another Jaredale right there. How beautiful are those? Um, so this is this was my first Rouge Vuitton over here. And do you guys know what happened here? It's like still on the vine. Obviously, I need to remove it. But um, I actually wanted to ask you guys, in your wealth of knowledge from the interwebs and around the world, whoever's watching this, if you know what happened here, because it's obviously some sort of mold or something, but it was like on the vine. I didn't notice any other damage earlier. So, um, yeah, let me know. I've never had that happen before. Um, I'm just, I'm so excited to have the pumpkins and the pumpkin patches here. I love pumpkins. I keep telling my husband I need a bigger garden just so I can grow more pumpkins. They take up so much space, so it's a little tricky um, trying to figure out where they're going to fit in amongst other things. It'd be good to be able to plant them with corn and such, so I'll probably try that again. So that's my protege in September. I imagine it's going to look a lot different in a couple weeks as things are pulled out and we prep beds for fall. And I will show you again or maybe take you along as I do some fall prep. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're interested, I also have a small orchard I've started in a berry garden on the other side of the house there. And so I will be doing a fall tour of that in the next few weeks as well. Until next time, friends, happy gardening. Got my tub.